During the 2007 French Open, Venus Williams hit a really fast serve, and we want to figure out what's the average force that's exerted on the tennis ball by the racket during this serve. We'll use the 58 meters per second as the speed after impact, and assume that it was in contact for five milliseconds. Let's begin by drawing a diagram of what was going on. We have a ball that has some initial linear momentum that's zero as that ball is just hanging in the air. And then we have the impulse of action of the racket acting on it. We use the average form of it since we want the average force, F delta T is the impulse. During this time, actually, gravity is also acting on the ball. So if we want, we can include this. And then that will equal the ball after the serve with some MV final. We know most of this stuff when we're trying to find that force of impact. We will write a momentum expression. I'm just going to skip to writing the x-directional version of this, which is that we start with zero momentum, we add on F delta T, and then we end up with M V final. We can solve for the thing we want to solve for, which is F by dividing both sides by delta T. And we get F is equal to M V final over delta T. We can plug in values of 0 0.057 kilograms for the ball, 58 meters per second for the final speed, and five milliseconds or 0 0.005 seconds for the time of impact, leaving us with a force of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the second newtons. Okay, so that's our force average force. What about the weight of the ball? What effect does that have? Let's look at it. If we look at the y direction version, what we start off is we still have no momentum initially, and then we have, if I'm calling down positive, we have weight times delta t equaling zero. This seems confusing. This implies that since delta t is not zero, our weight has to be zero, and we know that's not true. What's going on here? Well, in practice, if the weight's actually pulling it down, you would have some downward motion of the ball after. But let's see how much effect that would actually have. So we notice some confusion here, and we continue on to say, let's find out what that weight is by multiplying the weight of the ball or multiplying the mass of the ball by gravity to get our weight. When we do that, we find a weight of the ball that's equal to 0.5586 newtons. And we can compare that weight of the ball to the weight, to the force that's exerted over here, and say that my weight is much less than this force because we're less than one and here we're up at 6.6 .6 times 10 to the second or 660-ish. So it's over a hundred times different, close to a thousand. That's enough to make this negligible. That's gonna be the case often in these sorts of impact problems where you might have a weight mattering or other forces involved, but the impulse of action from the sharp impact is going to dominate any of the other forces involved. So frequently, you can include them, but frequently we'll just neglect them and say, we assume this is small compared to the other forces, and if we want, we can check that later.